but I think it's got worse around two particular factors. First and foremost, the volume of the abuse that you get. Uh, to give you an example of this, immediately after um, the Syria vote, I got 12,500 tweets within a couple of days, 2,500 in the first day alone. That makes it impossible for anybody to engage in the material being sent to them. Volume is also something a lot of the young campaigners talk to me about, about being bombarded with messages that just simply make it impossible for them to respond. So I certainly think that volume point is new. But is that abuse or is that just people... Well, some of it, so, uh, no, a lot of it is abusive. Absolutely, there is some of it which is disagreement and some of it is, is comment. But the point that there is a conversation going on which you simply cannot respond to in of itself is a deliberate tactic. It's called doxing. And we know that it's been done in other formats. It's certainly happening online, both in Facebook and in Twitter to campaigners. The second element of it, which I think has got a lot worse as well, is the nature of the violence involved. Look, I've been campaigning around violence online and online harassment for some time, but the numbers of people now reporting routinely getting rape threats, death threats, bomb threats, misogyny, has got a lot worse as well. So I do think it is evolving. My biggest concern, though, is I think a lot of this is starting to contaminate offline debate as well. What's it, what is it you fear, though, in terms of the online world contaminating the real world? When I speak to these young campaigners, they have amazing insight into the changes they want to see. They have all sorts of thoughts and issues they want to campaign on, but they're not coming forward. And actually, it's not just about young people. A whole range of people have started to say, actually, I'd really like to get involved in that, but I'm frightened about what response I'd get. That damages us all. When we don't hear every single voice in our society, then our democracy suffers, our decision-making suffers, our culture suffers too. But do you too. think it's happening? in the real world, that yes, kind of I intimidation. Do. Yes, I absolutely do. I think that people are feeling put off getting involved in public debates. People are feeling frightened about the kinds of things that they might be exposed to, the kind of derision they might get, the kind of abuse they might get. That is very different from people disagreeing with you. That's very different from a robust debate. I mean, you, you've had kind of online activism since Syria that is different to the abuse you were getting before. Are you getting the same thing in the real world, offline as well? Well, I've experienced abuse online for some time in a range of ways. Certainly since the Syria wrote, there was an escalation in the volume, and that's one of the things I think is, is newer for people, is the sheer volume of messages that you get. So the, the impossibility of even beginning to respond, even beginning to engage, even being able to reply to people wanting to ask you questions in amongst all the abuse. Um, but one of the things I think we've also noticed, I, I talked to a lot of young women who, for example, set up feminist societies in their schools, and they say exactly the same phrases and the same attitudes are being exposed to them in person as, in, as, as online as well. People being that abusive. Yes, and I think that's what really concerns me, is that there, is, there isn't this divide between the online and the offline that people used to say, well, just ignore it. I, I don't think it's for anyone to ignore it. I think it's for us all to say, this isn't the kind of debate, this isn't the kind of public sphere we want. We do want people to disagree. We want people to have a debate. So just give me an example of the kind of stuff that you're getting. Uh, I've had the full gamut from uh, people suggesting that I should be spat at in the street and bottled, that I should be knifed, I've had bomb threats, I've had death threats, I've had quite specific threats about my persona, I've had people looking up uh, my offices and saying they'll find me on particular roads, I've had the full range of things. Do you think when people turn up now at demonstrations the way they're turning up in your constituency, they are similarly trying to intimidate in a way that's different to, you know, to what demonstrations used to be about? No, I see no connection between the abuse that I've had online and the protests that have taken part in my constituency, and I've been very clear about that. You know, what should Jeremy Corbyn, as a leader of your movement, be doing to try and cut this out? I've spoken to Jeremy previously about it. I know that he recognises there's a challenge there because he wants to see debate and discussion as well. But I also think we have to do more than say this is about having a kinder Twitter feed. We have to be clear about why it matters to have a public space where you can have debate, disagreement. That means looking at some of the technical things you could do. For example, when somebody says, I want you to stop contacting me, that being respected because that's part of our harassment legislation. But also having some technical fixes that mean if somebody mutes somebody on one platform, they mute them across the others. These things aren't impossible to do what Yvette Cooper and I are trying to do is bring together the technology companies, the campaigners, the police to say, actually, how do we fix this so that everybody can be heard?